Hi, welcome to this the third tutorial in my series on factorizing. Now, in this particular tutorial, I'm going to start to show you how we factorize quadratic expressions. Now, quadratic expressions are expressions of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are constants, and the constant a never equals zero. So, we've got three examples here of quadratic expressions. Here we've got a typical quadratic expression with three terms in. The constants a are 5, b here is minus 7, and c is the plus 2. Quadratic expressions don't just have to have three terms, they can have two terms, like in this one, the a doesn't equal 0, it's 3, so we get 3x squared, and the b here is minus 8. c, in fact, is 0. So, 3x squared minus 8x. And in this particular quadratic expression, I've made the b 0. So we've got a here, which is 1, 1x squared. b, as I said, was 0, and c is minus 9. Now, in my next few tutorials on factorizing, we're going to be looking at quadratic expressions. And what I'm going to show you is how we factorize these. Okay? Now, whenever you get a quadratic expression, or any expression, as I've said in all my other tutorials so far, always look to see whether you've got a common factor first of all. So if I had this quadratic expression, you'll notice there's no common factor no number or value of x that is in any or all terms I should say. When we look at this one however you'll notice that it does have a common factor between the two terms x. This one doesn't have any common factors. So I'll show you later how we factorize as I say quadratics that don't have common factors. Anyway let's just get this started so First of all, then, let's have a look at three quadratic expressions. Now, the first one here, as I said, you always look to see whether you've got any common factors. And we have. In these two terms, you've got an x, which is a common factor. So this is going to be identical, then, to x bracket x minus 3. And that would expand out to give us x squared minus 3x. OK, what we've got here. So we've got two factors, the x being then multiplied by the second factor, x minus 3, creating one term. OK? I picked this example because you don't have to have quadratics that have just x in, OK? Like x and x squared. Here we've got a quadratic in what we call a. We've got an a and we've got an a squared in place of the x and the x squared. So, how do we factorize this one? Well, again, first of all, always check to see whether we've got common factors. And we have. We've got not only the a, we've got a 5 that goes into the 15 and the 10. So, the highest common factor here is 5a. So, we have a bracket and we're going to put 2a in there to give us 10a squared and just simply minus 3 to give minus 15a. All right. So again, in this one, we've got one term consisting this time of three factors. We've got the first factor is 5, the second factor is a, and the third factor is 2a minus 3. And the last one, well, we've got three terms here. That's why I picked this one. And again, unlike this one up here in the three terms, this one didn't have any common factors, but this one does. It's not an x, because we haven't got an x in every term, but we have got a number that goes into 12, the minus 6 and the 9. And that number, that highest common factor, would be 3. So we could write this then as 3 bracket 4x squared, OK, to give us the 12x squared up here. Now we just need minus 2x to give minus 6x when we do 3 times minus 2x and then to give the plus 9 we just need plus 3. So we factorize the quadratic expression 
got one term, this time made up of two factors, the 3, and the 4x squared minus 2x plus 3 is the second factor. Okay, so this is an introduction then to factorizing quadratic expressions, what a quadratic expression is, and as I say, the first thing you look for is are there any common factors. Now in the next few tutorials, I'm going to start to show you how you factorize this quadratic expression, and then I'll go on to show you how you factorize this type of quadratic expression. Okay, well that brings us now to the end of this first tutorial in factorizing quadratic expressions.